Um, we've got the, the first part of it is public comment. Any public comment? Check that box. <laughs> we have a next. In addition to the agenda, I'm going to um, delete meeting minutes from the approval process as item number four. And I'm going to add on in that place uh, a quick update on where we're at with the buildings. Many minutes, we've already approved them all except for the last two that I haven't right. done. So, <laughs> so I may mean, didn't do my homework. Um, <laughs> so if you guys are okay with that, I'll just make that change. Sure. Um, and then we are at the point where we're going to turn it over and, and introduce um, Art with Campbell's Hump Design Group and talk about the information he's provided to us and the proposal that he's provided to us. Do you need us to pull that up or would you just like to give an overview and talk about it? Only if it benefits the group and anybody online. Um, I have a copy. It looks like I have a copy be there. Yeah, so. you bought it and provided copies of it. it. I'm good with you giving us an overview and we mm -hmm. delve into any questions or a better understanding of it and what your thought process is. Yeah. Um, so a couple of quick I guess housekeeping elements here or items here is um, I worked with Matt at, uh, at the beta, so we got to know each other and the facilities work that I did. And uh, Matt had a good sense for my background just based on that. For everybody here, um, I'm a, a registered architect. I don't practice architecture, haven't practiced architecture <laughs> in years, but I keep my resident uh, re uh, registration because it was hard to come by. Um, practiced as an electrical engineer, contractor, and real estate developer. So I've seen all sides of the equation. Um, was with PC construction when the Waterbury complex was being renovated and rehabilitated after the, the flood and have come across other projects like that in my background that Matt reached out and said, hey, can you give us a hand? We're trying to work through this. I said, sure, happy to jump in and offer some support where I can. And that's really where I see the conversation tonight is kind of understanding what it is that you're really looking for and help guide the process. Right. It sounds like there's been some stop and go on <laughs> this, primarily from um, from the budget side and timing side. And so I think that what I offered Matt is just some strategies around how you might move forward with that. It sounds like Black River Design did some work for you all in the past that didn't necessarily align with what you were trying to do. And so we talked about in, in my role as facilitator, really for the benefit of the community is to create a menu of options that we could price out and you could implement in a way that met the budgetary needs of the community. <clears throat> the crazy thing about this sort of work is, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, sometimes you don't really know what you're getting into until you open the building up, right? especially when you talk about potentially moving electrical systems and heating systems out of the basement, getting them out of a flood zone, finding space in the upper parts of the building and just making sure that it all works together. So you don't really know. So you need to provide yourself a path that allows you to pick from column A or column B or column C. As you know more, you may be able to expand the scope or you may actually need to reduce the scope for that period of time. And that's really what this proposal tried to lay out in a, in a first cut yeah. based on those conversations it was recognizing the need, recognizing the desire, and then trying to collectively and collaboratively create a roadmap that would work to get you to the end. Um, you know, timing is is what it is. There's needs that supersede they, and they come up all the time. Uh, richmond has been dealing with flooding now for ever. ever <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Yep. Um, and, you know, Matt, I, I think I submitted this in, uh, looks like in June or July. Yeah. Late June, July. So there are clearly some things that have come up and created other priorities for the community that you know, brings us here today. As you move forward, those priorities aren't going to stop interfering with this. Somehow the initial work that you want to do to protect the building, to keep things moving, is going to need to find a way to filter to the top, regardless of those other things that are happening, but you all are in a better, much better position to determine what the priorities are and what the community really needs than, than I am at this point. Um, uh, so that's kind of the big overview. Is there any, any questions, anything that jumps out at you? Am I off base anywhere? Does that sound 
like not not really but uh i, I don't know exactly what matt and adam yeah. told you but you know we went through the thing with black river and it came up with a price of a little under 10 million dollars yeah. and voters didn't care for that and so that, that so that's where we are yeah <laughs> you know that uh Matt and Adam are much more familiar with the process of getting this done than mm -hmm. I think any of us are. Uh, so uh, I, I guess I'm kind of, you know, I, I read through your your part of it. Uh, the questions that I have is going forward from here, who else needs to be involved? Right. <laughs> you know, before we get to the yeah. point we start uh, knocking down walls and so forth here um some other people are are going to be joining the team um we don't have we're going to need some funding before we when, when does the bond bond vote come when do we know enough in order to go to the voters again yeah. and how much money do we need before that uh and uh, we've got to go and uh, uh drag it out of the select board <laughs> and so forth so those those kind of and I think before right. we jump to questions, I just want you to understand where we're coming from. Yeah, here. I think great. that's important because I think you've got Mike. I wrote down your questions so we come back to them. Yeah. But Mike is Mike and I just came on this committee along with Matt and Adam just this year, and he was on the prior committee and, and agreed to stay. All the other committee members that the nine point eight million dollar vote went down. They said, "Okay, we're done. We put a, a number of years into this, and we're done." Um, my mindset is not even at the point where more mics is yet about what's the next steps and how we go through this because my mindset is I'm here because I didn't agree with the 9.8 million yeah. and if I don't like what somebody else did then I've got a volunteer step up and and do something different I didn't agree with a total gut job and remodel and moving walls and, and spending all of that kind of money and I know they said well when you start to do the change the heating or change the electrical you get into all of those things you should be doing all of those things Part of me was like, this community can't handle a $9.8 million bond to be able to put, we do a whole roof on the post office so we could put solar panels on top. That's not where our community was at. Um, so I'm not even sure what I think needs to be done needs to be done yet, or what I don't think doesn't need to be done, doesn't need to be, I don't know, I don't even know what really we should focus on. So that's some of the guidance I'd be looking for along with when Mike says, who else are we bringing in? When do we go to bond vote? But like you I liked how you said menu options, a path and all of those kind of things are great, but we have a community who feels like they just spent a lot of money on, on, on Black River and only spent money on Black River and got nothing for the building at all. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. And I feel that pain. It's a lot like when you uh, build a house and you have a bad builder and you have a really bad experience. You don't ever think about building a house again. That builder <laughs> kind of gives everybody a bad name. And, right. and that happens in the, the design services space, too. For people that aren't part of the community, like I volunteered. I was on the development review board in South Burlington. I was also on the planning commission in South Burlington. Um, I chaired the school consolidation committee in South Burlington. So I have every, a very keen awareness of the separation and the places where there's inflection between the private side and the public side and how you have to pull things together to make it palatable and actually give it an opportunity to pass muster with the community. And that is you have to always provide these menu options. You can't go in with a one, you know, one shoe fits all type of mentality because typically in these projects they're going to come in over budget yeah. it's an old building there's a lot of unknowns here it's it's very detailed work it takes skilled trades people to put it back together again it's it really is a lot more money you could almost for that 9.8 million dollars and what you have here fundamentally build a brand new building you know, and, yeah. and move in right that's what that's why some of us said uh no yeah and so this is really in a lot of ways, it's a community-based effort. Um, it's it's one from the heart, 
not one from the head necessarily. And so we've got to find that path. And the questions you're both asking are really good. And, and the right place to start is why even pursue this? Like what is driving the need to become more resilient given where the FEMA map right. is going? Is that it? Is I it higher insurance? Is it you can't get insurance. You know what are the things that are so what? FEMA changed the map. It doesn't really matter, right? Yeah. For me, it's not FEMA because I've been dealing with FEMA since prior to Hurricane Irene. Okay, okay. so I became yep. a FEMA. I wrote the grants for the awesome. buyouts, for the elevations, for all that kind of stuff. That is not for me. That's not my issue with this building. The FEMA issue with this building is not one for me. My issue with this building is we haven't done maintenance real. I mean, we've done some maintenance on it in the last 20, 20 years, but not what we should be doing. So I'm here to say, let's right. get the major ticket, the major maintenance items that have been not taken care of. Like we've done some roof work. We've never touched, we've only replaced two windows in the whole building. So there's major maintenance that's never been done. So when we start to look at that major maintenance, that's where it brings into the unknowns what else should we be looking at? What other systems should we be looking at? I don't I don't judge the prior committee. The prior committee in Black, Black River, they truly said, let's dream. Let's go ask all of our tenants what would be the best case scenario. Let's ask all of our staff what would be the best case scenario. Yep. The dream was 9.8. It was actually 10.2 to begin with, with the yep. solar panels. So that dream wasn't a reality for the taxpayer. Right. So now I don't want to go into this and say, let's dream as big as we can dream again. I'm going into it with a different mindset. I'm going into what's broke or needs to be replaced in the next so many years. And let's have a capital maintenance plan for the next 20 years that's realistic. Right. Do we have to do yeah. everything at once? Or can we do something now, five years from now, another thing? Or do we have to attack them all at the same time? That's the answers I don't know. And I didn't get those answers from the Black River information it, that they presented because it, it was a dream. That's what they were asked, hired I, to do. I yeah. think the charge of the old committee and, and sort of the way that we operated was different than this committee. And in that exact thing, we were presented with a menu of options. We were presented with a number awesome. of different possibilities, including new build versus this building. Yeah. And what the that what the old committee did was, okay, our charge is going to be to completely renovate this building so that we have a new building inside of an old building. That was rejected by the voters and that's that's fine. And I think, like you said, this committee's charge is not renovate the building. This committee's charge is fix what we have with yeah. the building. And so I think now we're looking for a menu of options of how do we but, fix what we have? We're not right. talking about renovate anything. We're talking about fix. I think I think my view though, the first thing we need to fix is when whenever the river comes up, it runs into the basement. Okay. Let's stop. Yeah. And, <laughs> and 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 that is what is yeah. really driving that's a an awful what? That's a maintenance unit. That's I, a, well, it's pretty damn big maintenance thing. If we have to move the, if we end up having to move the heating so, system and electrical system out of the basement and so forth. So, in, in the world that I live in, you have capital expenditures, which are typically new, bigger expenses, and then you have your operating expenses, which would be some of the things that you're talking about here, deferred maintenance. And yeah. for a project like this, for a building like this, there is an intersection of the two. You may be doing some work on the mechanical system that you have to do. So if you're going to do that work, what's the premium to put it someplace Correct. that also solves the FEMA right. problem you have? Right. Electrical, right. you can do that for every one of the systems. Right. Right. And I agree but, with Mike. But I, but I think yeah. that I, I think we start at the bottom of the building and, and figure out how to keep what to do about the flooding problem. And we and I I know you went on a tour with uh, mm -hmm. Matt and uh, Adam here, and I'd say you know, Black River came up with some suggestions. I guess I have a hard time figuring out what they are. I mean, I I am very very disappointed with what Black River gave us. You know, they I I, I don't know if their suggestions are good or not. Because I don't, I, I spent a lot of time looking through their documentation, and I can't figure out a lot of exactly what they want, what their 
what they're doing. You get a little hint from the cost, you get a little hint from an engineering study and so forth, but they never gave us a plan of this is what we plan to do mm -hmm. for the flood mitigation part of it. Uh, but so I think taking another look at that as, as, as the beginning of saying, what do, do we need to, you know, they, they made the statement that it's um, not feasible to dry flood proof the base, basement. You can't but, where you are. You're but, not leaving. There's, there's... But they didn't tell me why it's not feasible. Because if you're in yeah. the floodplain, you, if you're in the floodplain and if you're going to flood, you, flood mitigation requires flow through vents. No, it doesn't. In some it doesn't. Bed. It does not require flow through vents. If you dry flood proof it, they say it isn't feasible. And I and, and maybe it isn't. And I have some reason to believe that they're probably right. But and 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 the engineering study on the post office part of it said that uh, it was not feasible to dry flood proof it. And in the very same paragraph, they said if the they, so they wanted to fill in the basement up to the floor, but then they said if the floor was less than one foot below, uh, yeah, less than one foot above base flood of elevation, then they needed to dry flood proof it. When in the same paragraph said they couldn't, and so there's just a whole lot of confusion there. And I I, I think it takes another look at what really is necessary and possible. Yeah, so in in the spirit of being financially responsible, um, and I've worked with Blackbird before, and I don't know who did the report, but they are competent. And yeah. so it just, you, you know, I don't know that I would go away from them I'm, just because you're not happy right yeah. now. I think there's value <laughs> in having a conversation with them and asking yeah. the, the, the questions and yeah. It it's just it just is what it is. Um, uh, again, I don't want to speak to what they recommended, whether it will work or not. But I will tell you that um, FEMA strategies allow they're they're prescriptive. They're not descriptive, so they're not going to tell you exactly what to do. They're going to give you ideas. Flow through vents are one option. Okay. The dry basements are another option. Dry basements are what was used in Waterbury. We filled all the the windows with masonry to kept the window openings till they they looked like the windows were there. Filled them with masonry and then filled the entire basement with lightweight material. Put a concrete floor on it, and away we went. Yeah. Uh, typically, flood resilient strategies are a combination of right. some version of those two with some other ones. Um, but it sounds like if we go back to this idea of, okay, um, we want to, we want to address the deferred maintenance on the building. Clearly there's deferred maintenance. First thing I would do, and maybe you already have this is you do a deferred maintenance study. You, mm -hmm. you get uh, a building systems engineer to come in. Uh, you get a, somebody to look at the roof, the windows, those and give you a full-blown report on the age of each of the systems, what the expected life is of that system, how much life is left, has it passed its useful life? Um, and then from that, build on a strategy that replaces, improves, puts the building back together again for the future. Layer on top of that, okay, if we're gonna do these things, one, two, three, ABC, how can we also accommodate more than one need with right. those dollars? Flood resiliency, maybe there's some in spaces that need to have ADA or accessibility addressed, those types of things, so that you're getting the most bang for the dollars that you do spend when you spend that. Right. But if it would start typically with the deferred maintenance study, on top of that, once you were to complete the work, you, you deferred maintenance study, create your menu, items, have those priced out, decide what you're going to do, and then you do a reserve study or capital reserve study. And it's tough for communities. I get that. I offer this up because the more communities that can do it, the better off you are going forward. But a reserve study actually will outline what uh, the replacement time frame is for each of those building systems. And that allows you through a variety of funding mechanisms. Typically on the private side, we would do that 
through the lease, some portion of the lease payment would go towards the capital reserve account. You know, how do you do that? And as a community, you can set up a capital reserve account so that when these things happen, you can be rolling into it without having to go through big tax increases over and over and over. And we again. do have a capital reserve account. Awesome. We have a capital reserve account that's not big enough to do what we need to do. And it hasn't been being used for maintenance on this building, but we have been using some of the capital reserve account to get a lot of work done at the library next door. So we're at least taking care of one of the buildings. That's a start. Yes, yeah, yes, hundred percent. That's a good start. Hundred percent. So I do support the FEMA stuff. I do support that. I do know, depending on how much money we plan on on spending, we have local regulations that require us that are forcing us that that force the flood mitigation work if we trigger a certain dollar percentage value of the structure. Mm -hmm. Aside from that, if we don't trigger that, we still want to address this, but we don't have to do what is required to address it. It's optional versus required. Yeah. And that's where my mindset is. is I don't know if we're required, and I do agree with Mike, we need to do something to address it because I consider that deferred maintenance as well. We knew flood waters were coming in. What have we done to fix that or prevent that or, or take care of that going down the road? <laughs> so I just don't know if we're going to be full blown having to do it one way or the other way. And I think the numbers, like Mike is thinking too, financially, because he's confused with what they, all the different directions they say to go, is what are, again, what's that menu? What's the value of those pieces in that menu yeah. to see if we're required to do? most expensive thing there is or can we do some other things that serve the same purpose like you said there's different ways to do it right and i think right. that's where my mindset is with the is i don't know what we're required to do yet because we don't know how much we're going to spend in the building comparative to triggering it, yeah that really then drives home the the starting place which is the deferred maintenance the, the system study that needs to get done to actually know where, where each of those systems are. I would expect that Black River should have done some of that, unless they were just planning on doing a gut job. Well, they were doing a gut job pretty much. Uh, there was another study done, I had the report here about five years ago that uh, Redloff did. Okay. And and they didn't get into the, the flood resiliency at all, but they did do a pretty good study of the building. They had a pretty, I mean, it's five years old now, but it's five years older than <laughs> Yeah, I th I thought I really would have loved to have seen the report. I think I have the report. Black River did send a lot of different people through the building to look at different things. So um, there's Red, there Red, Red, Red Love did as well. Red, I, was, yeah. I think they were two similar things. Recommended yeah. value was one point two million to do the work. One two point two or one point four? What was the? I haven't looked at it in like. Yeah, I looked at it a while ago. I don't remember the numbers, but they again they didn't address like flood resiliency at all. Correct. So they were going to. You know they weren't going to do anything with the heating system and so forth. So you know they're. I think they also did parking lot, landscape, like all. Of yeah, the they didn't do any of that. Yeah, so, really yeah. but uh, you know they said we needed new windows and yeah. uh, and there there was a lot of good information in their report and I, I would have loved to have seen something like that from Black River and we just got a whole lot of little pieces here and there and to try to figure out what they were proposing was almost impossible. Uh, well, back to Mike's question, like who we bring in and how we bring in people and stuff like that. My question to you is, I know, for example, we will we have to go to the select board to ask to spend money. And the money is available for us in that capital reserve fund yeah. to do capital reserve projects. Um, I don't know if it has to go out to RFP. Um, I know we would have say on who we could hire and who we're comfortable with and who, who has... Um, but I think, et cetera. But when it comes to this list that you just gave us, like step one, step two, step three, if we bring you in, if we're able to bring you in and you oversee this, do you help us with getting the study done, hiring people to do the study? Do you help us through that process so that it's not putting undue burden and stress on the town employees that are already just trying to get light bulbs fixed? Right. You know what I mean? Yes. And, and that kind of thing. And not and managing other RFPs that they don't want to have to manage these RFPs. And how does that work? But, is that something your group would do? Walk us through the process? Yes, that's one of the key yeah. um, services, key Provides that we do absolutely. 
that's uh, in in my experience that's the biggest benefit because those folks are going to do the work on the it's important to get the right person in the right chair because you're going to have a long-term relationship likely with those people mm -hmm. and so my job is to help work through that process whether it's hiring the contractor the design make those recommendations to you and based on my experience and what your your needs are um you know matt, matt knows this from our time working together at at beta there are certain rules of thumb that are really important in this and make things very simple for instance one of the keys for me when I'm hiring a contractor, say you have a $10 million project and you're going to take 12 months to do that project. So it's a one year project. That project should not represent more than 25% of the contractor's annual revenue. And the reason you do that <laughs> is because every project has an inflection point where you need resources to get to the end. If your project is more than 25% of their annual revenue, that means they don't have enough resources for you when you need them. And you can scale that. It works at scale across a variety of ranges. So there's these very simple things that we can mm -hmm. look at in terms of pre-qualifying people, firms, entities that you want to do this work. Everything from who the design team would be to who the contractors and subcontractors are going to be. That's the that's the resource that I provide is helping you through that process to make you feel like you're not on an island, that somebody's not feeding you a line, and we can talk through that. And and that's why I shared earlier that I've registered architect, practiced as an electrical engineer, worked as a real estate developer, worked as a contractor, that I can sit across the table from any of those people, and there's not yeah. something they can tell me that. Thanks. I haven't seen from the other side and <laughs> what's going on. That's what you get at yeah. the end of the yeah. day. It's, you want to go through the process and you don't want a lot of collateral damage. And the biggest collateral damage communities face is when projects go awry from um, a dollar standpoint. You have very limited funds to work with. So there has to be a good process to ensure that that outcome is very predictable. So, Sorry, Mike, no, no, it's um, okay. so basically we have to start with a reasonable budget to that after doing all of the research that we're doing before we even want to head down on the avenue of talking about a bond vote or anything like that. We have to have real numbers and we have to have a real plan that is if all else fails, can be scaled back or can be expanded. As need be during the construction, so we'll be some uh, some pieces in there that right. Well, Red Loaf is a great company. I love the work that they do. I've not worked with them personally, but I know they do quality work. The nice thing about Red Loaf is that they are design build, so they have in house uh, architects, engineers, as well as construction professionals. So the stuff they're designing, they have to make it easy for their yeah. folks to go build. There's right. some efficiencies that are created there. If they've done a building study already, even though it's five years old, the place I would reach out to, depending on what your contracting obligations are, requirements are, would be to go to them and say, are you interested in updating this study? They're familiar with the facility. They've um, they've done it once. They can provide you an update and you're comparing apples to apples from the same set of eyes. You're not getting fresh eyes that are gonna maybe clot, make it a little muddier than you yeah. need yeah. it or want it to be right. at this point. They have probably some information already because they were one of the three firms that we interviewed when we were hiring for the third level well, design firm. They, they probably have a proposal they can dust off. <laughs> well, it's, 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 it's I, I think their original one was inspection systems. I think that $1.2 million proposed um, maintenance work. <laughs> Yeah. Um, it's probably going to send up right in the same direction, with the exception of adding in the FEMA work that we would definitely want to look to address. But so, depending on how conservative or aggressive you want to be, you could add 30 to 50% of that over five years that's indexed at six to eight percent a year, depending on how you want to account for the COVID time period. If you were to add 30% to the 1.4, then it's 1.8. 
We're at a 50% and it's 2.1. I'm seeing and even if it's five grand instead of 10 right now, <laughs> once the voters with the 10, <laughs> five, five is looking better. Right, yes, right. So I think between five and 1.2 is more realistic for me. Yeah, um, I, yeah. I, I think we're gonna have a really hard time getting to that point. Getting to From, which point? I want to down to 5 million. I, I think that looking at what Black River put in there and going through it and looking, so well, what, what can we not do if we if we start in the basement and have to move the heating system out and so forth, it drives other things down through. Uh, yeah, we can take some things out. We'll get it down some. But. Here's what's really hard in the process. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure what the RFP looked like that went out or how it described how you wanted the information and price information to come back. And typically, what you would do is we would sit down and we'd say, okay, here are the likely three scenarios. Here's how we want to see the numbers come back. So you automatically get to see what the the A option, B option, and C option are. Yeah. Rather than when you get $9.8 million yeah. and you try to work backwards, it's impossible. Sure. You could take value engineering typically will reduce it three to five percent. Anything more than five percent that comes out of a project is is program change. Right. You're taking square footage out, you take a finish, like it is a fundamental change in the projects and depending on where, and, and that's okay because that $5 million, if that's what we're setting as the offset limit, if we think that's the maximum that the community would be open to, then we know what we're- I think that deferred maintenance study is gonna tell us what systems have ex they're exceeded their life. If they've exceeded their life and they're, they're, they, they can break down any day now, that's a different approach to the taxpayers yes. than it is to say, well, it has to, right. 10 more years of life, but we're going to make you spend the money now. Mm -hmm. and that's a harder sell for me personally. Yeah. So, so that's it, why I need to see yeah. that deferred maintenance study for me because I'm coming from the maintenance standpoint is key. Right. So, you know, having been involved in not in this particular type of project in the community, but having been involved in other projects in South Burlington, the strategy would be the same and that is you go to the voters with what you have to do and then you say for a little bit more the fema stuff right we can take care of two problems for a small premium versus waiting and finding ourselves in a position where it's a lot more money because now we got to replace the system like we got to find time. So there's all those things that come into play so it's it's the gotta haves with the Nice to have and what that small and the nice to have that's bad. I don't have a better phrase for it because it's not really nice to have at some level. It's just a it's different really responsible. There you go. I, okay. I, Fantastic. It's gotta have it's the needs, yeah, the fiscal responsibility of the, the capital plan if you can do right. it now. And then the moonshot and then the is, dreamer situation right. was the nine point eight. <laughs> we can always we can always say yeah. you didn't want that dream. I, yeah. <laughs> are you we keep that? talking about FEMA and I'm not sure I see an awful lot of difference between meeting the FEMA requirements and doing what we need to to well, not, the, not have the building yeah, the destroyed one, when we get a flood. Do we, well, I mean, there are some, certainly, but... Yeah, and I guess in this conversation, what the buckets I would use are the gotta-haves, which it sounds like the... You need to have a conversation amongst yourselves to determine whether the FEMA thing is a gotta have or a fiscally responsible thing to have bucket. I and think we don't need to solve that. That's not. No, but well, we have to see how much it's cost us for the yeah. last five well, months. How much has it cost us to, to repair anything? Yeah. Yes. Right. There is because some if historical. It's, if, it's, if there's not a lot of cost to having a flood be, impact this building, we got to know. Why spend two million dollars more? To go do something that you're spending 50 but, grand that it would take 40 floods to but, spend that type of money but the right? last the, calculus the last that. flood that filled up the basement maybe didn't quite wipe out the heating system but the next one might i mean it's and it might not and it might it might not i mean they and talk about the might, uh, money when it wipes it out human money might cover it to replace it and elevate it at that time Right. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what the cost has been. That's one question I'll put down to get the answer to, so we're aware of that. The, the challenge you're going to have is negotiating against yourselves, right? Uh -huh. Is <laughs> in this, and and so that's why it's really important to decide what the gotta haves are. 
First is deferred maintenance, and that's just replacing in kind for anything that has outlived the two so long. That's got to happen. Right? That's that's the baseline for any kind of conversation. Then it's what are the impacts that the community has felt from the flooding over some period of time, understanding what those impacts are mm -hmm. and determining what it would cost to solve those impacts by either relocating the certain pieces of equipment, mm -hmm. having different types of equipment installed in relatively the same place that might be more flood worthy. For instance, one of the projects I worked on um, was a new hotel right down on the Charleston waterfront. And you're seeing a lot of this today if you've watched any of the, the Weather Channel, right? They've got those flood-proof barriers that they put up around right. the building. The biggest challenge we took so the whole first floor in order to get FEMA to approve us to put retail on the first floor. Normally what they do now in Charleston is that Charleston has to be flow-through on the first floor for any new buildings right on the water. This is right on the Cooper River. Uh, in order for us to get FEMA to say, okay, you can put habitable space down there, we had a flood wall system designed into the building, and these panels just attached to the outside of the building to keep the, the flood waters out. We had to find a place to store those <laughs> in the garage because you're in the downtown. That was the biggest headache. But here, what you could do, right, is some of these openings that you have, you could simply find a place to store some flood panels rather than moving the system's into a place that right. costs a whole lot of money. So even in addressing FEMA, there are several options that you can look at to get to the, that are gonna have different price points to allow things to move forward. Like, I, I don't think the solution is necessarily just moving all of the equipment. We really need to look at what the impacts have been. Are they getting worse? Are they modulating, you know, along the same sort of baseline? And then if they're modulating, how do we use some, a variety of strategies to solve the problem? Cost effective strategies, physically responsible. That, that, that's, kind of, that's kind of what I was saying before, is that the that Black River basically said it's not feasible to keep the water out of the basement, so we're, we need to let it in. Yeah, so and, in fairness to Black River, here's what I would offer. Um, <laughs> First, Black River was not involved in any of the water work. Yeah. That work was done by Freeman French Freeman and Goody Clancy out of Boston. Goody Clancy, their historic preservation architects. There's nothing different about Waterbury than this building. You have a stone basement, they had stone basement, masonry yeah. basements, right? Relatively close to the river, relatively close to the river. The buildings are, from a, a theoretical perspective, they're almost identical. So part of my job right, is making sure you have the right consultant, put the right butt in the right chair so that we're getting the right information that allows you to make the decisions that you need to make. Black River is a great firm. They, at least in my experience with them, they don't have a lot of flood resilient experience. In fact, there's not a lot of firms around that do. It's a very specialized piece of work. So for me, expecting to get some sort of guidance from them in that area would be unrealistic and you would need okay. to have a partner with them to support that effort so that you get a complete they, report. They did hire an engineering firm, I forget the name of it, from Burlington uh, that gave them a report that basically recommended what they had, yeah. I think, had in there. Yeah. Uh, For anybody that's worked <laughs> with me in, in Vermont, I tell the story all the time. Um, part of my job is actually workforce development. And I say that because uh, Burlington, Vermont has great architects and engineers, but in order to survive in Vermont, you have to be a general practitioner. Yeah. So you're doing maybe one type, that building type every 10 years or every five years. You're not doing it all the time. So that experience isn't intuitive yeah. and, and the breadth of your scope yeah. of experience is relatively small compared to firms that do that. So the projects that I work on, the bigger, more complex projects, the beta one, for example, um, we brought in a Boston firm to be the architect and the engineer of record, partnered them with local firms so that the local firms got the experience on the advanced manufacturing so that when beta needed to have some work done to the plant and the facility, they have a local resource to do that. So that's workforce mm -hmm. training 101, right? How do you lift all, all boats? 
The same thing here is that we can't expect somebody like Black River, and maybe when their proposal was submitted, it read in a way that you, the community thought they were getting that sort of experience. But I'd be, I'd want to see the proposal and how that came through. But my sense is they don't do this all the time to know what those strategies are that could be applied to this specific goal. Okay. I I'd like I'd like I to see that proposal that too because I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I, 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 you know, my my understanding of what they proposed for the building was two things. One was to dig up the foundation all the way around and coat it with some kind of liquid applied sealant to keep out the water whenever they could. Because other than the river coming up and coming in through the windows, when it rains, they get water coming in through the basement as well. It's yeah. not, not a huge issue, but it's very inconvenient to, to do. It's a stone, it's a masonry, it's a wet wall. It's designed to be yeah. a wet wall. This building was built when um, tight buildings were a pipe dream. It was yeah. designed to yeah. be drafty so you didn't get mold and right. all the other <laughs> things that happen when you have a really tight building, which is why you bring fresh air into a yeah. building. Um, and, and, and I said all that just as a way of tempering the, yeah. the disappointment from the Black River. Yeah. Piece, because I don't think it was all necessarily Black River. I just I, think that the community didn't have somebody guiding the process for right, them right. to make sure that. Yeah, I think that's that was a, a they hired them and assumed they were going to do your job. Yeah. And Maybe. it's no different than asking a committee like this to do that same thing. Yeah, absolutely. You don't, you don't have that experience, no. right? You're all you're doing different things during the day. You're very involved in the community. You want to find a way to support the community. You chose the buildings um committee to do that with. And, and, and some of us didn't vote for the bond bid <laughs> and got and got dragged into the committee because <laughs> well that's really admirable. I can't tell you. Up. We stepped up. Like, I thought, like, <laughs> <laughs> we have that conversation with our kids all the time. Like, at a certain level, I think people are complaining. You can only complain for so long. At that point, you lose your your right. In my world, this is pretty black and white. And this so, is you lose your right to complain yeah. if you're not willing to become part of the solution. Well, and some so some whole black river thing. I don't know who's online listening to this. So maybe you <laughs> yeah. against me at some point. Right. But... <laughs> Nobody is. Is. If we can use it any of it, we can look right. at it then. Yeah. I don't even yeah. want to look at it anymore. Yeah. I don't even want to try to analyze what they said, did, or whatever. I didn't see the list of deferred maintenance necessities at the very top. I that's my how my mind is thinking right now. If there's even any this deferred maintenance that it can occur in the next 12 months, but we don't have to wait to go out the bottom though. That's where I'm at. So yeah. if but, there's if there's right. something that's going to be done anyhow. No matter, like if it was a, like, I don't know, repair a window that's leaking, hello, we don't have to wait for the whole bond yeah, vote yeah, to get right. some basic things done. So I'm just giving you that I, heads up yeah. that that mindset is and also I, there. Um, I, I guess I'm coming from a different direction. It seems like the building has some serious problems that we ought to, ought to be looking at and, mm -hmm. and, and, and start working towards those at least. I mean, we've, we spent all summer now talking about the maintenance items and so forth. And as you said, you were in here in June. They're ready to start work on July first, I think. <laughs> and uh, and uh, and we, here we are in, in October. So I really think we need to start looking at the serious problems that the building has. And I think the the flood resiliency is is where it starts. I think we need to un understand what we think we ought to do there and does that drive I know I don't know if we make a list we talked about we talked it very much in, in meetings before here about just what you're saying here in fact uh, we were working on coming up a list of all the equipment and trying to put dates when they were yeah uh, going yeah. to be but in, it sounds from, like that it, it sounds like we just need to move not try to do it as a committee and go to a deferred maintenance study yeah. and a report that actually categorizes those kinds of but, things for us. Right, because that report will lead into your reserve study, which will then help you and on the capital reserve. What, what, so. what kind of things are there in this building that have a life? 
like that. But the heating system, the air conditioning, ventilation system, roof, the it roof, all your, your roof, your windows, your gutters. You know, we we kind of we kind of know what most of those are. I mean, um, and I and yeah, I I've heard whether you know all of it's true or not, but. You know, the air conditioning and ventilation system is well past their expected lifetime. So that's something that the heating system is doing just fine. It's got a lot of got a life left in it. Yeah. Um, the roof, they put a new roof on this building not too long ago. Yeah. We're, we're talking, we've got a grant in to put a new roof on the, on the post office, and I'm still not sure whether it needs it. <laughs> but but uh, there's I think it's a membrane. I don't think it's a full, I think they're. They, that that's to be determined as they get into what they have to do structurally, et cetera. They yeah. Think that is something when they put insulation in. There's a format. In fact, but I have a, a form that I use yeah. for capital reserve studies. I don't do them, but it's a form I give to the firms that do. So I get the information yeah. back the way that I want the information back. Right. The same thing when you're doing building reports. I think it's great that you guys are trying to look at nameplates and figure all that stuff out. One, no. I don't think you have enough time to do no. it in the time frame that you want. No. But really, more importantly, That's why we're in October. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but more importantly, you want the ability to ask questions and advocate on the community's behalf. You don't want to be the ones to sit there and have to answer five years from now why something right. you 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 replace something rather than taking a recommendation from somebody. I, there needs to be that separation of church and state. Yeah, I don't disagree with what you're doing. What I was the point I was making is yeah. I don't think there are that many items on I'd be that surprised. List. I'm happy to send you <laughs> a capital reserve money list, but you would actually be, oh, I think be surprised. But, but I mean on a masonry building, how often do you do you tuck point and go back on the brick and make sure that yeah. the brick is being yeah, cleaned yeah. and man like it's it's a lot more yeah. than you would yeah. think it would be. Um, that but that's why you hire the professional. Yeah, no, no, I don't. I don't disagree. It yeah. just uh, as far as any of that. Yeah, you're gonna. I'm, listen, sure, I'm sure there'll be. You already things. know the big ones. Yeah, you already know. We know the big. Ones. We know the big ones. Yes, I guess right. that's it. And and you know the the walls need to be painted every twenty years or so. <laughs> you know. <laughs> They did know. a pretty good job. Right. I mean, if you're going to wait 20 years, the colors <laughs> come right back. You know, <laughs> they'll be back in style. You don't need to <laughs> pay that. But uh, yeah. So where we go from here? And and Matt, hey, thanks, thanks. Is that that's Matt jumping on yeah, there? Yeah, sorry, right? a bit of a kid emergency this evening. Uh, apologies for joining late. He's done an excellent job at um, his presentation and answering our questions and understanding next steps. And for us, it just seems like. Our next steps um, really do involve, I think, us moving forward to go to the select board. Um, and I'm comfortable with whatever process they, they have to go to. Um, I'm comfortable with moving forward with art if that's at all allowed, or um, if you have to, we have to go to a kind of bid process, or however that may, I mean, RFP or whatever that may look like. Um, So I don't know. So what do we have to do? We have to take a vote here to I, do that. I think, we, I think we can take a vote tonight. I know Adam's not here, but he's a select board member, right. so it's only going to go in front of him anyway. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> I think that it would be a motion to recommend right. that we move forward with hiring um, hiring a. It, hiring it, Camel's Hump Design Group or, or, or somebody, or somebody better than in the process of <laughs> putting out a bid right. for a design. No. Matt, Matt knows <laughs> there's no pride in ownership here. <laughs> my, my job is hopefully to provide some no, um, no. A, a, a little peek behind the curtain to give you more information right. to help do yeah. what no, it is no, that, no. that no, you're and trying I, to do. And I, so. I, something, I, I think it's something that was missing from the last go around and something we really need. I apologize for not having your proposal right in front of me. The, the terminology used for who we're going to hire, the type of service we're going to hire you for, what is that? Um, it would be, for, it, I provide owner of project management services, the ac acronym is OPM services, mm -hmm. to help facilitate your, in this particular instance, 
design and construction scope schedule budgeting needs to you know throughout the process of course. What's the difference between what you do and an owner's rep? Because the town does currently contract with someone who functions as the owner's rep for like they key handled all of the project work with the library and yep. dealt with it. Like, is that the same? Because that would be an example of where we would probably need to go out to bid because if Jay wanted to also submit a proposal, I don't know that he does exactly I, the same I, services. I, I but... think we probably do need to go out with an RFP because... The cost, I think, is fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah, Anything yeah. over fifteen thousand dollars, they need to get bids on. Yeah. So I, I think it probably will need to have to so, be competitive in some manner. But I think that you've, you've certainly uh, helped us a lot here. So hopefully, mm -hmm. I'll give you a head up. But <laughs> yeah, no, um, happy to help. But in terms of the next steps, just so that you have this and you're thinking about it, the building survey would be number one, right? Have that updated. Um, it feels like you could just simply the deferred maintenance study. Deferred maintenance study. That's yep. right. Have that updated by Brad Loaf. It feels like that's a, a low hanging fruit item. In parallel to that, and you brought this up a little bit ago, and that is um, identify what 2024 or 2024 slash 2025 funds remain that you can allocate towards some of those deferred maintenance items to get you started. So you're getting some wins, right? Mm -hmm. Part of part of moving projects like this through the community effectively is creating some wins. Mm -hmm. And if you've got some money and you've got some low hanging fruit, that's right. the place you start. Just to let you know, we're already doing that, and that's why that's yeah, why yeah. Mark said we've been doing it all summer. Yeah, we've got the right. list. We've we got do the have RFPs going out. We already told the the town yeah. staff here's the things to go ahead with, and those are the wins that the community is going to start to see immediately. Great. Right. But we we do have a fund, a maintenance fund for the buildings that we have two tenants in the building, the post office and the uh, TV station here that are paying pretty significant amount of rent into it. So I think there's mm -hmm. there's a couple hundred thousand dollars probably in that fund or more now. I don't know exactly. But so there is some money there and that that would be probably where the money to to hire you would come from, mm -hmm. uh, I would expect, and 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 so forth, and and they're still paying her into it. So <laughs> you know, it's that's a, a source of money that doesn't need to come out of the town budget as such uh, every year. And so it's, it's a fund that sits there and accumulates and, and goes down as we spend it. Mm -hmm. So to answer your questions on the mm -hmm. owners' rep, um, there is a lot of overlap. Mm -hmm. The traditional owners reps are, they have experience usually in one silo or the other, mm -hmm. not across the entire right. design construction development spectrum. Okay. And just as you're. So it would be a you hire an owner's rep to watch out for the construction part of it or, or is that other part? a lot of time the owner's rep in that instance is called a clerk of the works, right? Yeah. You're just making That's sure yeah. the, the works being installed. Yeah. You said across the design construction, what was the third thing you said? Real estate. I think I said real estate development. No, but uh, it, to, real to, estate. To, to the project, the owner's project manager, what did you call it? What's the OPM? Owner's project manager. Okay, that's yeah. what I thought. And then to oversee design, construction, and... Um, yes, really good question. Did we record the meeting? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we just didn't even know the mark on the time, and we can spin it back for a couple of minutes. Sorry about that. No, it's okay. Um, Brain packed it with there. So, yeah. But anyhow, so do you want to make the motion, or you? Uh, I can make sure. the motion. Motion to recommend to the select board to hire an OPM owner's project manager or OPM services. I'd second that. To assist the town center committee. Mm -hmm with proposals in the future of the select board. I mean, that's the purpose of it, right? But I'll stop, start with recommend to the select board to hire an OPM and this project manager for the purpose to work with our committee. Second. Any further discussion? Okay, well, we'll do a vote. Mike, I. Amy, I. Kara, I. Matt, I. <laughs> that passed. And how we will do this is I will contact um, 
Duncan or both Duncan and Josh? Probably a Josh. This is probably a Josh question. Um, I think above Duncan. It, 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 right? <laughs> because Duncan's going to do anything. I'm going to copy them both. Is okay. what I said. I'm going to yeah. copy Duncan yeah. and Josh to say this is the vote we just took. How, what's the next step for the select board? Probably the next step for the select board is we will be agenda item on their agenda to make this request. Mm -hmm. We will give them an example. We will use yours as a, a yeah, this is a public, you can, so, so in term, public document only because it's, it's already a public document. But if you, correct. And actually, here's what I would say is it's not technically a public document yet because there's negotiations that are going on and it doesn't. We're not in executive session, unfortunately. Maybe we should have done this in executive session because then you have some cover from um, the public side of it. And it's you can been posted when we look at something. It's done. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. my team is yeah. we what our Fair enough. Okay. that we look at, we post to the public. Yeah. So it. it's yeah. been public. And that, that's what's the disadvantage for you, because if it goes out to RFP, it's not really fair if they're gonna try to own your bid you. But there's where we come back to we get to help. And, and this is where th that's actually a, a really good point for two minutes. I know you gotta move on. I welcome you being here. So thank you. So when you're evaluating, and the same thing with construction and design professionals, when you're evaluating services, evaluate on best value, not on low bid. Most times, low bid is not your your low cost at the end of the day, and you're that's going to show up someplace else. And so when you're issuing the RFP, it's important to include an evaluation matrix in there that says here's the things that are really important. Here's how we're going to weight them to make sure that you can go after best value at not lowest price. So cost is just one item in that evaluation matrix. It's not the only item. Yep. We agree. <laughs> we are definitely not just give us the give us the low, give us the cheapest because then you're going to get the cheapest work sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Pay for exactly. Ideally, and, and, and Matt said this for me, ideally, when I contract for design services, um, especially on the architecture side, I want to hire the architect that can give me a uh, $400 a square foot building for $300 a square foot. I don't want to hire the architect that can give me a $400 a square foot building for $400 a square foot. Right? There's a, a subtlety and a nuance to people that know how to do the work, and that's where your best value is at. We are in total agreement. And if we had our say, we'd be able to yeah, think, yeah. As we go through this, I mean, obviously we're here because of the cost of the last one. Yeah. And one thing, more than one person that was on the other committee said that they were really surprised at how much that costs, which I would hope as we go through the process that I won't be surprised when it comes out that, that we... We, I know we can't get bids off from everybody all the way, but cost needs to be part of the discussion. <laughs> um, it, it does, and actually, and I think that's why the, the fee, if you look at the way the, the fee and the work plan is put together, um, in here... What's the first fee? It's like 10000 Which might be below the threshold. So the first, the first one is. Yeah, it's 10000 so that's 500 for the first phase which is really so the whole point of that phase is to get the right players on board for you to establish the concepts and the schematic design which is really the menu and then that menu gets priced and depending on where that price is that's what sets you up for how you move into your phase two services which is continued development of the drawings and, and what needs to be so we need to research what this means we want them to hire someone but we don't know what level triggers the RFP, or if we can hire someone right. to do phase one. I, okay. I don't think we want to do that because uh, phase two and phase three are more than $15,000. No, yeah. no, is, no but, we don't know where to go. We're still trying to figure it out. So, but, phase but one we, first so here, here's what I would propose to you. Really what you want to do is have um, a, a memorandum of understanding, a work order, a contract for what we would call pre-development services strategy, um, initiatives, think whatever word you want to float in there that would be a different number than the $10,500 number, but helps helps you establish the protocols that you want to go through to get to the end product, right? There's so, so that would be like 
part of that first one? Is that what you're saying? Not um, it would there? be, or well, I don't want to muddy the waters like that because I don't believe yeah. in playing games right. with the fees. And I, yeah, right. no, no, yeah, 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 no, no, no. I think you're, you're no. spot on there. You got to take the, but um, in order to help you figure out who you're going to bring on, there you could do some work ahead of time and hire somebody to do that. Yes. Now it gets a little tricky because yeah. I have a certain way of working. I just, in, in terms of my experience, and so if you're asking me to help up front to bring other folks on, yeah. then yeah. Yeah, right. I get stuck in the middle right. on that. No, you're no, probably not no. the best. And I, and I, right. no, I, but when we go to them, we have to be clear on what we're asking yeah. for. Are we asking for somebody to do the whole project? Are we asking for somebody to come in and do a phase? Yeah, no, I don't, I, I, I don't think we want to do a phase. I think we don't want to have we don't want to hire you to do phase one and then go up bids on phase two we, we want to stick with whoever we pick uh, and i uh, think who how much the whole thing is going to going to be go ahead matt yeah I, I i think that's that's right but i think naturally we're gonna because of just how a public committee operates we're going to operate in phases in other sure. words we're going to figure things out we're going to make recommendations we're going to have to Right, uh, understand how we're going to get funding or how that's going to happen. Or th there's a lot of things. So as we go through this, I think it will naturally um, the work sets will will break up. Not that not that we want different people. Mike, I totally agree with you on that statement. Um, we totally in line there. I think you know we, we're going to work in chunks just by how this is going to go anyway. Right? We're going to get to a point, and then we're going to have to right. For example, go out to vote. Maybe that passes. Maybe that doesn't. Right. That those type of yeah, things. Right. Yeah. And I think my point more so was making sure we could explain the phases mm -hmm. to the select board. Not that I was asking them to only vote for, only yeah. hire somebody right. for phase one. It's explaining to them phase one would cost similar to this dollar amount. This is what we get in phase <laughs> one. And then there will be other phases moving forward. Great. Yeah. So if you were to look at the schedule, the work plan that was in that proposal, you'll see under pre-construction, there's an estimating line. And there's two periods where estimates get done. One after the concept and the schematic design is complete. So really what we're saying at the end of that estimate, the drawings get done, they get estimated very early so we can see where we're at against the budget. And that becomes a go, no-go decision in terms of whether or a pivot. If the number's coming in really high and we got to take a step back, then you know the rest of the work at tier gets canceled and you, and you reset based on where you need to go, or if it's on track, you just kind of move forward. And there's another check-in estimate after the design development is complete, so that next phase of the drawing, so that you know with some margin of error contingency that you're going to carry, right, that you're on budget and can continue to do that work because after your DD estimate, your design development estimate, is when you start to need to prepare, the depending on the amount you're going to go after, that's when you start to prepare your bond initiatives and all the language that has to go on the ballot. You have to have enough time to do that, to be able to get the ballots prepared. Mm -hmm. So you can't wait until right. the construction bid comes in. Otherwise it's going to be six right. months before you right. do the work and your cost is not going to be valid. Right. Yeah. And so the, this right. process is set up to allow right. you to go through a couple of gates to check your pricing to make sure it's where you need to be based on the menu, the items that you select to move forward. And and even before we get to that point, I think, you know, we have some sort of numbers from Black River as to what they did there. So we can we can say, well, we're not going to plant trees in the parking lot. <laughs> you know, there's some we could get some kind of a feeling of what we're what we're you, you could doing although everybody. I would caution until you really know what what level of debt the community is willing to well we don't know that until we until we vote yeah we don't even we don't even agree in this this committee and what it would be <laughs> which at some point you're gonna have to because you yeah. need to advocate for well, each other right majority is gonna rule in yeah. the end any committee yeah. Any society, majority is going to rule. Uh, so if I'm in the minority and I I don't have the everybody wants to do something one way, they can all say they want to do something one yeah, way. Right. I can say why I don't want to do no, that, absolutely. but we're going to move it forward. Right, and that's yes. okay. Yes, and but I and it could be less I look through. But at some point, the committee has to come in line, and even if you voted against it, you have to support it 
so that when it leaves the room, it's five zero and not three two. Mm, I don't agree with that. I I can still support a project, but I don't have to vote in favor of something I don't believe in. Agree. So the, I, yeah, I yeah, we're saying the same I, thing. I don't think yeah. all of that vote. I'm not just going to vote and say yes, I agree it. You, the majority is going to rule. If I don't agree with the vote, I will vote against it. I will still advocate for maintenance and things to be done. It just we cannot be a hundred percent all the time. I don't like. I don't. I don't like that. You, no, no, no. I wasn't advocating for that. What I was saying is really the same thing that that you just said is. You're going to go through your committee work. You're going to take a vote. It's going to be three, two. You can issue a minority opinion or however you're going to do that. But once that opinion is issued and the public decides that they're moving forward with the project, even though oh, you yeah. voted no, you're part of the yes to the, make sure that it goes. The, the confusion there is no, this I when it's presented, when this committee yeah. decides and it gets to the select board, we can present anything we want. It gets to the select board, they can change everything we did. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We're they only... ignore everything we, have... we said. Yes. So yeah. here's my point to you. Yeah. I don't have to bobblehead anybody. Right. And that's where I'm at. Is yeah. Mike and I can disagree on something. In the yeah. end, we might agree on the same exact, we might be a hundred percent in agreement. But it by this disagreement process, it really shows the community that we took as many sides, as many opinions, and we really looked at things. Yeah, if we it was don't, thoughtful. Yeah, it was measured, right, and it was responsible. It, and you need to be able to do that to be able to get to pass the sniff test with the community. Correct. Yeah. So I and, think that's what I was just saying. Yeah, it's yeah okay. we're on the same page. Yeah. It's okay yeah. to have it, and yeah. I'm not going out of here five, but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the other thing that, you know, I, I complained a bit about the other committee, but I don't really think it was totally their fault, was that when it came down to explaining this to the, to the public before the vote, I don't think they had a good idea what it was doing. Uh, they, they, didn't, they, they did an awful lot of work going out trying to sell this plan that they had, but I didn't think they did a good job of explaining why they needed to. And... I want to understand what we're doing as we're going through this. And in in terms that I, when when some friends of mine come up and say, what the heck are you doing this? I can explain to them why yeah. we are. And, and I, I'm not sure that everybody on that, may, you may disagree with me, but uh, she, she was on the other committee. So <laughs> we, we don't beat up on her too bad. But, um, but I, 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 looking at what Black River gave them, I don't know how they could understand everything that was in there. And so I, I just, I, I'd like to, I, I said I hadn't seen Black River proposal. I'd like to see it written in English, <laughs> what they're going to do, what we're planning to do, that we could, uh, that we could explain it and, and go out and, and not only sell what we're doing, but why we're doing it. And uh, yeah. Art, Art doesn't like this very much, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, <laughs> You know, Mike, the, after I, I did the same thing as you, I read through all those documents, tried to piece this story together. It was pretty hard to piece together, right? We all just got a stack of information. And um, I was thinking to myself, I know somebody has done this better. Um, and and that that's that's why I brought in art. One of the things I, I was incredibly impressed with when I, when I worked with art professionally was how clear the path was and how how articulate everything was the entire time and the bad news too right i think maybe most importantly and so one of the reasons i introduced introduced art here to the team um and, and camel sump here to the team is i was just so impressed with that and i, and I think I, I just thought we can do a better job here thank you and and look at you're going to put an RFP together. You've got to follow the community. Whatever the community path is, you've got to follow that. At the end of the day, um, if it does go somewhere else, I'm happy. I'm here to support. You've got a work plan. I would argue that the work plan that I gave you that outlines exactly the, the different activities that you go through and the gates you need to go through are the right ones regardless of who does the work. And there's a template there for getting this project going into a place that it needs to be. Now, it's set up to some degree so that it's just a sliding scale. The only place that doesn't slide real well is construction, weather dependent. So depending on when you're starting that work will impact 
the end date. But other than that, you've got a work plan there that has the ability to scale up, scale down. And, and I hope <laughs> Matt's looked at it. So I'm trusting that it's fairly easy to understand. No, there will no, be I, questions, I'm sure, but happy to answer any of those questions as you prep no, for those. Slides. Well, as far as that's concerned, I was, when I read that, yeah. I said, where was this? You know? I, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. And, and that's I, going back to the, the, the past committee work. Um, in a lot of ways in these public forums, the committees are only as good as the resources at their disposal. So if there wasn't somebody to help guide them through the process and organize the thoughts and the expectations for what Black River should be doing, then again, your community members, you have other things that you're doing all the time. Like, and, and I don't, I don't fault the other committee. You know, you wouldn't be here today if yeah. that wasn't on our committee, you right. know, we, they, the people on there didn't know where to go. And right. so they hired Black River and assumed they were going to guide them through it. And it probably wasn't the right decision, but it's it, it was the best they could do with what they knew at the time. And so, yeah, there's a couple of firms out there that do what I, I do. Um, and they, they the folks at White and Burke understand the same sort of process. Um, there's not a lot that 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 look at it through the same lens. And just regardless of kind of the work that you're gonna do going forward, when you go direct to a design services company, they're not as really set up to do what it is that you were trying to do before. And it's just, it is what it is. Yeah. yeah. Do you but have, you have some information to work off. Yeah. Do you have any questions for us? Um, is there anything that we should know from you that, You'd have a question for us. I don't want to have it just be us drilling you with yes. questions. If there's anything, I mean, I think I talked. I mentioned it earlier, right? The, the work that the committee and the community needs to do is you need to figure out collectively where the priorities are. Yeah. Some of that I understand is going to be determined by the economics of it, but some of it can be determined long before the economics. Like, how do we want to look at the world? Um, for me, I always break cost. That cost is neutral for me. The, the good cost, the bad cost, it's the emotion that we put on it as humans. Cost in my world goes into only two buckets. It's not good or bad. It goes into either an expense bucket or an investment bucket. And the more money you can put in the investment bucket, the better off you are. And so trying to figure out when you're going through those priorities, how you can leverage the investment side, you're going to come out miles ahead of it. Wow. And that's not work that we would do tonight. That's work that I'm happy to help. Uh, it's, it's, um, but it's certainly conversations mm -hmm. to have as a group. No, I think, you know, you've been great. I, um, you know, thank you for stepping in as community volunteers. <laughs> it's, it takes a lot to do this. You get a lot of people that poke holes at the work that you do. Nobody and... knows what we're doing. Nobody watches our shows. Nobody yeah. comes to them yet. They don't care until we ask them for money. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, you have, and then yeah, you, you may have yeah. heard a little chuckle from the rest of us in the meeting when uh, she asked if there was any public comment because we haven't had any yet. <laughs> yeah, I'm spending oh. enough money then, apparently. Well, not yet. Not yet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it'll, it'll come, it'll come out when we want to spend money come next. Yeah. 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 Meeting. Right. yeah. No, just um, I would just ask you know, keep me yeah. abreast. Let me know if I need to be at a, mm -hmm. a select board meeting or if there's going to be an RFP and. I, um, I, I'll keep my eyes up. Yeah, I think and love to help you guys through this. Yeah. Whatever Josh says, he's the town manager. He's going to determine if it goes on the next select board meeting. He's going to determine what we need to do. He's going to come back if we need to send something back to us for us to answer some more questions before it goes. Whatever he wants, we'll take care of it that way. Yeah, probably. And and just I may have mentioned this to, to Matt not that long ago, but just to be transparent, right? Some of my ability to do the work is going to be dependent on what else comes in the door mm -hmm. on my end, which is why I leave the door open for, hey, if you just want to make a phone call and talk through something, I'm happy to do that. Yeah. Um, if if somebody else is sitting in the chair, like if, you, if something doesn't sound right, you know, talk about it, then that's, I, as a community member, I'm here to do that as well. I, I suspect we are going to need a little more work before we get enough information to really do an RFP. I, I, 
I suspect when they start writing in the details of what we're looking for, that it's probably going to need a little more explanation. I think they've got that. I think they're going to be able to, that's a, that's the draft to go back. You can build an RFP off of that. that right there. there you go. Mm -hmm. Stan <laughs> <laughs> So I'm just saying, we're going to go by whatever Josh needs from us. Yeah. We're not going to step on any then, staffer's toes. And the people, uh, Matt and Adam, have a little more experience than the rest of us here at the meeting, too, I think, as to what uh, what, what has happened on other 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 places and so forth. So, yeah. Just stumbled through a couple of buildings in the time is all. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll have Matt go in and pitch it to the select board. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I'll leave you with there's good people at all firms. Yeah. I wouldn't hold the work that Black River did against them or uh, yeah. I, normally what happens is that there's some follow-on conversations that need to happen and it's a lot of times there's not time for those. And there, and there may have been conversations that everybody that had the conversation headed for the hills and the new group came in here. So I I, 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 I said one thing against them, the lack of an overall presentation yeah. format to yeah. easily understand all of their documents right. Right. was lacking, and that's on them. Yes. Um, so see. if you've got Matt on the other end of here, you have Mike, I've looked through it. I was just like, this is kind of a mess. Yeah. Um, right. Things aren't tying together easily. Mike saw some there. conflicting information there. that we all did there. when we read it. That it was like, okay, I've had enough of this. I don't need to look at the past because I'm not feeling very comfortable with some of this stuff. Yeah. Let's just move forward. That's the only thing that I would put on Black River yeah. is the yeah. lack of overall yeah. presentation, tying things together there, smoothly. There were there were yeah. all kinds of options in there, but there's nowhere that it said which one was they chose. You can kind of guess by the numbers, but but even those didn't come out right. It looked like they. It, Something came out. It's off by the price of their um, um, story pavilion out here. I think they took out. Was that taken out at the last minute? Maybe. Yes. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. We're gonna let Art go. Art's yeah. gotta travel yeah. back. Yeah. Art's gotta Thank travel you. back. I Thank appreciate you. you coming. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate it. Great. Thank you. Right. Always, so, always a pleasure. Sorry, I was late. Yep. Yeah. Hopefully the boys are in good shape. <laughs> little by little, you know. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Art. Okay. Nice we'll to meet you. Thank, yeah. Thank you. Bet. Okay. Okay. Looking at our agenda items, if it's okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, the update on the grant application status. Since Adam's not here, here, do we know anything about that? Uh, they applied. Oh, good. it's been applied for. They left that. They announced that at the select. He announced that at the select board meeting. So, and the fact that um, we get to see it first, and and that I was very appreciative of that. On their timeline of when they're returning, they think it's going to be really soon yeah. that they're going to hear, that they're going to hear what what percentage of funds we get based on the whole thing that we applied for. They don't think we're going to get all of it, mm -hmm. um, but who knows? Who hey, ten dollars is more than nothing, yep. right? So we'll wait and see. That's yeah. the update we're back at. That. Okay. Um, update from Duncan on the town center stuff. Um, where he is at with that, he has put a couple things out. I think he's put some stuff out to RP, but he's also um been working with the local builder who has come in um and done work for the town before. So he's trying to get on his schedule and do that to take care of the exterior work first. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's out there. Um, he's the lighting work. Lights is, are up. Lights light are all fixed. Light, light is, lights are fixed outside. They're talking about another one or doing something different. He's got some other things going on with lights outside, so it's not 100% yeah. done yet. It's um, a, I think it's the one in front of the library, right, yeah. that the car backed into that still needs to be addressed. So. Yeah. 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 And so they're talking about do they fix that yeah. one or replace it with a downcast light? Um, some people don't like the lights out. These lights, how they are, they like the downcast. So right now, they're up and running and mm -hmm. fixed. That's key. I think we're, when I go out tonight, I'm also going to watch how how far out those lights are covering. We talked about, uh, Becca and I have talked about maybe some tree work, having this tree that beside the post office um, light evaluated to see it's partially dead. So is it should it be taken down? 
kind of be trimmed up just the dead part. So she's going to the tree warden mm -hmm. to look at that. So the exterior is being addressed. Everything's a slow move. So it, it feels like, you know, if it's your own home, you also have to wait for a contractor to get there to do the work. Same thing at the town center. Mm -hmm. um, interior wise, there's some discussion about how they have, when you go out downstairs, um, before you go out the double doors, they've got a bunch of salt and different storage things there, shovels and stuff like that. We've talked about possibly building a closet so that that stuff can be inside a closet. Um, one discussion was possibly where the safe is, which is in the hallway, so that you don't have to, if, if those double doors are locked, somebody can use yep. the shovel. And, is that safe used for anything? The safe is not used for anything, so Duncan's so asking the historical group if what how they feel about keeping it. It's the original safe, but if it's not used, it's just a display thing. Yeah. Um, personally, I'm like, I either move it to somewhere else or sell it and take the money because we don't have the original desk that was used here. So yeah. that's my, I like to save certain historical things, a safe that weighs that much. Yeah. And <laughs> we could have a closet there. <laughs> Um, I'm open everybody to anybody else. Put it in the safe, and then everybody no, will be happy. it has little so slots. Oh, okay. So it has little slots for. So you can't use the safe like a cabinet. That's what I thought too. And so when they said that's how the inside was, mm -hmm. um, we just look. But <laughs> I don't think you're going to put salt in the safe. Um, anybody have an opinion on? Are you adamant about us keeping the safe? If you are, I can pass that along as well. I, I, I guess I would ask the historical society. I don't have any. Okay. I'd rather things. save other things than yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, the history teacher in me would have a hard time getting rid of something okay. that's yeah. I don't know if it's original to the building or unique to the building's history. So I would I would probably keep the safe. Maybe okay. not in the location okay. it is, but yeah. then do me yeah. a favor. Since yeah. you want you would consider <laughs> wanting to keep mm -hmm. it, I'm totally open to that. Um look at it, see what you think, where you think it mm -hmm. could go. I think the weight of the safe couldn't be put on the elevator and brought upstairs, right, Matt? I don't I think it's bigger than the elevator anyway, I, isn't it? I I I remember it being enormous. I don't know what it would weigh. It might out. It, it might more than the elevator would. Yeah. we might be cutting <laughs> the roof off to get that thing out. Damage the elevator, right? More than the those elevator. are awful expensive. Okay, to fix. so the place where it might be able to do is roll back through the doors and put it where all the salt was being kept right now. So it's on display before you go up the stairs, rather than when you walk down the hall. If they need a, if they need a yeah. closet right there to put everything in. And yeah, we're trying to clean up the area. We've got carpet, carpet picked up, we've got paint picked out. And that's on the list of things to do. We want to get the outside work done before the winter mm -hmm. because inside work can be done during the winter. But we have to decide about the safe because the safe has to be moved to have the carpet replaced and everything. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that's the interior stuff that's going on. Um, regular maintenance, Duncan's keeping on top of that. Um, I don't think there's anything else in his email for us to, to address or ask questions on other than with everything to save. So the history teacher that wants to keep mm -hmm. it is going to confirm if the only other place is where the salt is now, yeah. what do you think of that? Okay. Um, that's all I've got. I don't know if anybody else had anything else. No. Nope. I, I, oh, I shared the for another time. This might be an agenda item for next time. I did share the library's capital maintenance plan with everybody. It's in your email. Thank you. That will definitely be on yeah. the next one. And I think... Anything else for the next agenda? That's it. I'm, ass we'll I'm assuming back. we'll know about the grant next agenda. We'll put grant update. And um, we'll put also select board, um, select board update on the motion we sent to them. Great. And we'll put meeting minutes if we get back to that. <laughs> I've got nothing else. If you guys all have nothing else, then we're I think we're good. And that's right on time. Eight thirty one. We're ending on time. Aren't we perfect? Um, I thought that was really helpful to have Art here. Yeah. I 
I hate to have somebody invest so much time in us and it's not somebody we can possibly go forward without jump doing the other process, but there are processes that we need to adhere to and I totally support yeah. that. And I, I think I think folks in his profession are very used to that. Yeah. So I look forward to seeing what happens in those next steps of the process. Um and my question to the to Josh will be. How are we involved in that? those next steps of that process? How are we allowed to evaluate and look at um, the RFPs as they come in? How does that work? Because they're hiring, we're asking them to hire somebody to consult for us right. that we need to work with, not the select board and not the town staff. I, so I how does that work? I think the old committee, when we did the RFPs and the proposals to hire you know, Black River, I think we evaluated them and then made a recommendation to the select board that this was the person or the group that we would like to go with. And the select board said, fine. Beautiful. And I thought that is the way it was, but I want to yeah. just make sure nothing's changed. No, I don't think so. I think okay. we would make a recommendation. No, I, think they the I think they get all of, the, all of them in and open yes. them all at once. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is great. I'll take and a stop. motion to adjourn if anybody wants to, to, to make a second. Oh, um, let's go. Yeah. All, in favor? all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.